We get a lot of questions about our patented anti-wobble connection and wanted to go through some of the details, how it's constructed, how it works, and what to expect. Okay, I'm gonna walk you through the different components. It starts with a threaded bolt. This is proprietary and part of our system. It may look like just a normal bolt to you. Uh, it's got a chamfer taper that allows the lock or the T-handle to connect to it in the middle. Um, it's got a shoulder that's gonna resist action against the receiver hitch of your vehicle. And then the tip of the pin is part of what connects to the lock or the T-handle. Also included is a washer that's part of it, which is very important to have in place. It provides some separation, but also allows it to tighten up completely. On the lock component, also fully stainless steel, uh, we have what we call the um, chimney that comes off the lock. The chimney is actually going to go into the receiver hitch of your vehicle. So if you were to put it into your receiver hitch, and we'll show you that, um, it's also going to resist against the receiver hitch. It's important for this to be in place for the whole anti-wobble connection to work. Chimney goes over the pin, clicks into place, and then the chamfer is part of the connection in the middle. All of this goes in place, and then the threaded bolt is going to tighten down all the way to be able to make the anti-wobble system work. Now, it is it is something you can hand thread in uh, most of the way, but at some point you're going to have to get a ratchet and socket on that thing and tighten it up. We do not recommend using a pair of pliers or a set of channel locks or needle nose pliers or just your bare hand. You won't be able to get it tight enough. Uh, we recommend using um, either an extension on your socket or a deep socket. That'll help the ratchet give you more turning radius over the chain stays of your receiver hitch. Uh, this is an example of our tongue, aluminum, uh, with the threads inside of it. One side has less threads. That's where the chimney on the lock is gonna go. The other side has more threads, or rather threads closer to the edge, and that's where the pin's gonna go. That will be on the driver side of your vehicle. So when you're installing it, threaded pin is gonna go in on the passenger side. Lock goes in on the driver side and pops in place. Let's get into the details and show you how that all goes together. Uh, when you're installing it, it's best to do it from the back. It, you can do it from the side, but it's a little more difficult to get the right angles. You also don't want to have somebody leaning on it because as you can see, that's going to change the angle that it's in the receiver hitch. That's going to push against the pin and make it difficult to install. You don't want to have anything loaded on it. It's going to take a couple times. It first will be a little bit tough to feel it out, but once you've done it two or three times, it'll become like clockwork. It'll take you a minute or less to get it installed. Okay, once you slide it in, you're going to just check and make sure the hole's lined up. Do not slide it while your finger's in there. You'll pinch your finger and it'll hurt like the Dickens. The pin goes in on the passenger side. Right now, you can see it's not pushing in all the way. Just slide it in with your legs just a little bit. And now the bolt should be able to hand thread in. We do recommend that when you first get your pack mule, if you're having trouble in getting the pin to thread, slide the pack mule out of the hitch. You can slide it out like this, thread the pin in, make sure that it threads in. It won't go quite all the way because we account for the thickness of the receiver, but you can see it'll get pretty close to the direction and you can see how all that attaches there. If you have any trouble with the pin threading in all the way in this scenario, uh, just give us a ring. Okay, so we're threading the bolt in. Pop the lock on. Take the key out. Make sure that you've documented your key number. So in case you lose that, we can cut a new one for you. It's hand threaded in, still wobbles a lot. When it's brand new, sometimes when you first tighten this up, um, the whole system's coming together. The, if you've got the scout, there's a solid removable insert in there and it's gonna shift and adjust. And so once you put it in, give it a wobble, move it around and then snug it up one more time and make sure it's good. The reason that we recommend a ratchet and socket is because it's gonna turn really nice and easy for you. It's just a simple system. You can see how easy that is. And then when you're removing it, it's also easy to back that out. If you're trying to do it with a pair of pliers, it's gonna be a really frustrating experience because you can't get much turn out of it, but it can be done in an emergency. Those are adjustables and certainly a regular pair of pliers would be even a more frustrating experience. So, ratchet and socket, get it in there, 
and then snug it up. Okay, on the anti wobble, here's what to expect. We're accounting for side to side movement. Um, every receiver hitch is different in, in size, and so there's a chance that you're going to have a very small, like a 30 second inch gap between the top of the tongue on the pack mule and the receiver hitch of your vehicle. So what we're trying to account for is this left to right movement. So when you're going down the highway, if your load is a different weight or you're hitting bumps, that it's not wobbling back and forth. That's the anti-wobble component to it. Even when you've tightened it up all the way, there's a chance you're gonna have a little up and down. And if you tighten it up right, it might be a little more difficult to get it to go up or down. It looks like an inch, 132nd, when you move it out three feet, looks like an inch. But the reality is that you're gonna have three to 500 pounds on this thing. So once you put 500 pounds on this thing, you're not gonna be able to lift it up. It's gonna sit down in the bottom of your receiver itch and it's gonna be tight in place. You might think, well, what if I'm bouncing down a road? Is it gonna bounce up and down? No, you've got suspension on the rear of your vehicle. The suspension's moving up and down. The pack mule's tightened in. The weight's holding it down. I mean, if you jump railroad tracks, maybe you've got 400 pounds on the back. You might get a little bit of movement, but you're not gonna notice it. What we're really trying to account for is this left to right wobble that's happening. So yes, if you come to the back and you grab hold of it after you've tightened it up, you can get it to come up. Put 500 pounds on the back of it and try to come lift it, it's not gonna come up. We have to have a little bit of tolerance within the system. So is it is it 100% rock solid? Uh, no. Is, are you gonna have a little bit of movement? You can see I've got a little bit of movement. That's the pin flexing on the chimney within the receiver hitch. It's gonna move just a hair. All receiver hitches are slightly different. You know, we saw how 132nd at the hitch translates to an inch, 36 inches out. So if that gap's larger to the top or the gap's larger to the side, you might get a little bit more play. What you shouldn't have once you've installed it properly is a rack that's moving around like this. What this tells me is one of two things. Either this bolt hasn't been tightened up enough, or maybe you've tightened it, it's moved around a little bit, and then uh, there's been some adjustment inside the tongue and you need to just snug it up again, or that potentially um, there's a piece of dirt or something that's prevented the bolt from tightening all the way through the threads. Okay, so that's a rundown on the anti-wobble system, how it works and what to expect from it. Every vehicle is a little bit different, but we've created a system that's universal from one receiver hitch, whether it's a sedan, to another that's a three-quarter ton pickup truck. We made a system that's easy to install, works great and allows you to really load up gear and have confidence that it's gonna be secure and stable on the back of the road, whether you're headed down a highway or bouncing down some back road. Have fun out there, we'll see you on the trail.